Hi everyone, Gareth here from Clever Touch. This is a short video on how to create picture books with Lynx Whiteboard. But not just any picture book, children's picture books. So move over grown-ups. This one's for the kids. That's because on Friday the 2nd of April, it's International Children's Book Day. So this video is going to show you how you can make your own children's book using Lynx Whiteboard. Lynx Whiteboard is totally free, everybody. Kids, go and download it. Go onto your app store on your phone or your tablet. Look for Lynx Whiteboard. Install it on your device. If you've got a laptop or a MacBook, you can go to linkscloud.app and download it there and create an account. It's really easy to do, get your parents to help you. Then you'll be able to make some really fun things like this. Now in my last video for World Book Day, I showed how you could grab some characters from famous books and then use them to tell stories. So here I've got the mouse from the Gruffalo uh, along with the other characters all playing in the wood. Ooh, watch out there mouse. And these sorts of things are really easy to do. But what if you want to create your own story? So I've had a go here. This is a story about a little girl who ends up playing football with a robot. So here's the robot here. It's going to kick the ball over to the little girl. Oh, she's going to head it back to him. So you can see I can have a lot of fun with Link's whiteboard creating these stories. So let me show you how I did it. First of all, we'll go to a nice blank page. And I'm just going to stop presenting. So here I am in Link's whiteboard. This is what it looks like when you first open up a file. So I'm st staring at a blank page. I need to get a background in there, a backdrop for my story. So I'm going to search. So here's my search tool. And what I search for to get that football pitch is I search for a cartoon football pitch. There you go, some different options come up, some of them are great. This 3D one would be cool, but I really did like this one, so I'm just going to drag it on to my screen. Now, I need to make it larger, so I'm going to slide this little node over here so it's full screen. I can position it exactly where I want it to be. Now, a really cool trick is if you come to the menu, which is the blue square here, I can arrange this picture so it's in the background layer. There it goes. And I'm in the background layer now. I better come out of there because I don't want my characters to end up in the background layer. Now I need to make my characters. Yeah, I could search for them. For example, I searched for the football that I had in my story. Football, I'm also going to put in there the words no background. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. So if I grab this football here, you can see it's got a white background, but when I let go, the background isn't there with that particular one that I found. So that's perfect. It's a little bit large, so I'm just going to shrink it down to the size I want for my story. There we go. Now I need to make my characters. I could, of course, search for some characters. You could search for your favourite storybook character like Peppa Pig or whoever. But I think it's more fun to do your own drawing. Link's whiteboard is a whiteboarding space. You can draw. You can do anything that your teachers can do on their large touch screens at school. You can do in Link's whiteboard. So let's create one. Now, this pen here has various shapes that I can use to get me started. So when I made my little girl character, I started off with a triangle to create her dress. I believe I used orange. So I'm just going to drag this shape out until I'm happy with it. Even if I'm not, afterwards I can go in and change it. And now I'm going to use a circle for her head. There's my circle. So this time I'll change the colour. And there we go. So there's her head. Now, I'm also going to start getting ready the shapes for the robot. So let's start off with a nice square body for him. 
And then I believe I use a pentagon for the top of his head. But if I want a slightly different uh, shade, I can change that later as well. So let me just drag a pentagon on there for his head. I can move that around in a minute. And I think we will use some arrows for his arms. Now you'll notice as I'm dragging these arrows on, I'm not um, bothering to stick them to the body yet. That's fine. I'm just getting them into position. And I think we'll have some of these triangles for his feet. One, two. If I click off there now, you can see I've got all the various pieces. And we're now going to go to my selector, the hand. I don't like that font, it's a little bit small, so I need to make it a little bit larger. Ooh. And maybe a little bit bigger that way. So they're more equal, that's good. Now I can pick those feet up and put them into position on the robot. And the arms, there we go. So he's got his short arms. Let me just position that head so it's a bit more central. Now, my robot needs some features. So if I go back to my pens, I can go back to the circle so we can give him some eyes. Let's go with yellow eyes. So there's one. Now what I could do rather than have to repeat that is if I click with the selector and go to the menu, I can click duplicate. That means make a copy, a multiple. So now I could go and pick up that eye and put it exactly where I want it on the robot's body. That's quite cute, putting it there in the middle. Let's go back to my shapes. We'll get a rectangle. We'll give him a nice sort of red robot mouth. Now, I believe I also use green on my uh, first robot example to make a nice little sensor screen for the robot. And we could also add some buttons as well, different color buttons maybe. Okay, we'll just do add one more. Okay. Now, I've also got pens that I can use. So with the pens, I can pick a particular type of pen. I can pick a color, I'll just shrink that down, and now I can start to add extra features to my character. So the little girl here, I need to give her some arms, don't I? So I'm just drawing freehand. If you've got a touch screen device, like a tablet, you can do it much easier than having to use your mouse pad on a laptop. So there we go. Let's add in her fingers and her legs. Okay. And now what I need to do is give her some hair. She does not want to be a bald little girl. So I'm just adding lots of hair on, doing lots of little squiggles there. Make her hair look realistic. Fantastic. Now, I also need to add on some features. So we'll give her some eyes and a nice smiley mouth and a little nose too. And she's missing some feet. So let's see, some nice yellow trainers, I think. I'm just gonna add these on here. Oh, I don't, I'm not too sure if they're standing out very well on that green background. But we can always change those later. There we go. So now I've got my robot and the football and the little girl. However, what happens if I select a part of the little girl and try to move her around? Let's pick this leg, for example. Uh-oh, her feet are separate items to the rest of her. I need to do something about that. Now, all I have to do is click and hold with my selector, and I can pick up all the various pieces of the little girl. Now, I need a tool to help me join them all together. Here's a spanner, that's a tool. And in here is the button that says group. So now that I've grouped them all together, you can see now that little girl is one item. So now if I wanted to pick her up and move her around, I'd be able to do that. Now the robot, he's all separate items as well. So I need to group him together also. So there we go. So my robot's all together and I've got the football there and the little girl here. Little girls make me wonder where I've arranged her to. So I can just check that I haven't put her in the background. There, no, no, she's fine. She's there ready for me to play with. Okay, so another thing that I can do with the, with the little girl 
is that I can make sure that I make a editable, <laughs> if I can say the word, in delivery mode. So that means that when I go into the presentation mode or delivery mode, I'll be able to move her around just like the robot as well. So I want him to be editable in delivery mode as well. Now, another cool thing that I can do is if I come to the slides here, is that I can um, make sure that I make copies of this slide. So this is my new slide. So if I come to the menu here and I say duplicate, and uh, maybe I'll do it again, duplicate, then I've got three pages at the minute for my story. So if I go back to the first one, the first page of my story, I might want to decide that I want to start this story with no robot at all. And maybe I need to make a change to the little girl as well. So if I go in here, I'm going to ungroup the little girl and I'm going to grab her facial features and I'm going to delete them. I've deleted her face. But now I'm going to put them back. But there's going to be something a bit different. She's not very happy, is she? That's because she's got nobody to play with. Oh dear. So, in the start of my story, I'll just move the football out of the way. In the start of my story, this poor little girl has nobody to play with at all. So I need to give her a, a friend, don't I? So she starts off rather sad. She actually looks a, a little bit cross too, doesn't she? Maybe she's fallen out with uh, uh, her little brother or something in the story. Now I need to get my robot to come into the story too. So first of all, I think this little girl needs to uh, change how she's going to uh, look when this robot appears. So again, I'm going to grab her face and I'm going to delete it and I'm going to get the pen and we're going to give her a totally different face now. She's shocked because the robot's just turned up. So now again, I need to make sure that I oops, put um, her all back together so she's not all separate pieces again. So I just select her again and I group her together. Now the robot, it might look quite cool if actually he flies in. And I'm gonna use this little joystick to put him at an angle. So here he is, we can have him flying in. Let me just check that the little girl is going to be movable, oops, that just moved her head out of the way now as well. So let's just check that I'm going to uh, make sure that she um, is ready to be moved during the story too. So I need to make sure she's editable in delivery mode also, along with the football, of course. So now you can see I've got three pages. The first one is where she's sad, cross and on her own. The second one is where the robot is going to come in and join her. And then in the last picture, um, there they are playing together and she's all happy again. Now, the other great thing about Link's whiteboard is you can add text to your stories. So this tab here is all about my text boxes. You can choose three default fonts that you can set up. So I'm going to pick this one here. This is a nice clear one for writing a story with. So. I need to give her a name. Let's call her Clara. So one day Clara was cross and alone at the park. Okay. Then here on this page, I'll have another text box. Suddenly a strange robot appeared in the sky. Now I don't want that text box to get in the way of the robot so afterwards I can go and select that and move it around a little bit. Let's move it up. Now finally in the last box I need another text box don't I? Clara and the robot played football together. Obviously, this is a very basic story and you will do much better than me, but I don't want to bore you for ages by planning a, a 
20 page story full of character description and so on see what you can do how creative can you be and uh, we at clever touch would love to see the stories if you're able to send them to us at clevertouch.com so let's have a quick look at my story i'll go back to page five and we'll start presenting so one day clara was cross and alone at the park so there she is feeling all grumpy and sorry for herself Suddenly, a strange robot appeared in the sky. Here comes the robot, flying in. I can make him larger as well on my touch screen. Clara and the robot played football together. So you get the idea. It's great to be able to have this free whiteboard app that you can put onto your device and have loads of fun with writing stories, creating the pictures for them, and then playing the story in presentation mode. So have fun, and we'd love to see what you create. Have a great Children's International Book Day. Bye.